The next step is to get our buttons to do something. We want each button to take us to the game that we chose. And the game will be in a different page, so we need to implement very basic navigation. So let's start by creating the class where the game will live. Right click the project file and choose add and new item. Then let's choose one of the .NET MAUI items and that's going to be the content page. And I'll just call it game page. And I'll change the text of the label to welcome to game page just for testing. And back to the main page.xaml, I have to add a click event to one of the buttons. So let's start with the addition button. So I'm using the clicked attribute to say that every time that this button is clicked, we're going to call a method called onGameChosen. In the code behind file, let's create that method. So let's create a private method since we only want it to be used inside this class and void because it doesn't return anything. And the method will have two arguments. The first one is a big object with information about the button and the second is a .NET class with information about the event. Now we want to have just one page for all the games. And to keep the code clean, I want all the buttons to call the same method. So we need to find a way to know which button is being clicked. So we need to grab something from this sender object, which at the moment is an anonymous object. It doesn't have any type. And the easiest way to do that is by converting this anonymous object to a type. And that type will be the button type. And that's a class that belongs to the .NET MAUI namespace and we're using a technique called casting where we convert a variable into a variable of another type and in this case we are using explicit casting since we are telling the compiler which type that we want to convert this variable into and we do that by explicitly declaring the type in parentheses and the next step is to implement the navigation so all we need to do here is to call the push async method of the navigation type and if you're just getting started with C-sharp, this is a new term for you, the async term. And that relates to asynchronous programming, which is a slightly more advanced topic in C-sharp. But just to give you some context, so far in our programs, we've executed statements in order. So after each statement, we execute the next. And in an asynchronous program, we can have methods executed in parallel. And that's very useful when we have, for example, multiple users using the same application. But again, that's a more advanced topic that we'll cover in future courses. But we can see here that the compiler doesn't like that we are passing an argument into the game page constructor. And that's because in the constructor's signature, there are no parameters. So we need to change the signature by saying that this constructor expects a string as an argument. Once that's done, we can test if it works. And if we click on the addition button with a breakpoint on the method, we can hover over the sender object and see all the information about this button, including the text, which is addition. And if we carry on with execution, we can see that text passed to the constructor. And when we continue, the page gets loaded. But now I need to do something with the information that was passed to this page, which is the game type that we want. So we're going to create a field. We talked about what a field is in the console application for this game. And there's a link to that video and to other resources on fields in the show notes below. But basically I'm creating a game type property, which is a string initialized in the constructor and assigned to the incoming game type. And for this to work, I need to set a binding context. And this can be set in XAML, but I'm doing it in the code behind file because the game page will only have one binding context. And the this keyword means that I'm assigning the binding context to the current instance of this class. So now I can bind the game type field to the text in the label. And I do that with curly brackets and the binding keyword along with the name of the field. So let's test if it works. If I click on the addition button, I navigate to the games page and I can see that the field is correctly printed. So now let's add the same click event to all the other buttons. And in the view games button, let's add a click event that will trigger a different method. The on view previous games chosen. So let's create that method in the code behind. I'll copy and paste the first method and modify it accordingly. But then we need to create a previous games page. 
So again, right click on your project, choose add item in .NET MAUI and then choose content page. And I'm naming this page previous games. In the new page, I'll get rid of the title and in the label, I'll just say previous games, just to see if it works. Back in the main page code behind, I have to pass the previous games page to the push async method and let's see if it works. And it looks like I'm navigating correctly. And let's quickly test the other buttons as well to make sure everything works. And all the buttons seem to work. In the next chapter, we will implement the logic for our game.